IoT Week. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, we will talk about uh, the interoperability in the context of uh, federation of testbeds. Uh, we have several speakers. We have uh, firstly Brecht Vermeulen, which is working at IMEC. He's manager of uh, test uh, lab, uh, uh, notably, and he was also a technical project manager and architect in the context of Fed for Fire and Fed for Fire Plus project. Fed for Fire Plus is a biggest um, testbed federation for next generation of internet. We have Denis Andre from uh, ITUT SG11, uh, which is uh, uh, in charge of um, standardization uh, concerning all the aspects li linked to testing, notably uh, test specification, uh, uh, protocols, and so on. Uh, we have uh, Ranganai Chaparadza, which is a consultant uh, notably for Vodafone and also uh, a good member of HCTC Int, uh, notably, uh, specialized in the, the standardization for um, 5G core, notably SDN, NFV, and so on. And we have Guido Maggiore, which is working to a uh, team and also chair of HCTC Int. I would like to refer to Brecht now. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Cedric. Uh, good morning also. I try to share my screen. So um, as uh, Cedric introduced me, I'm, I'm Brecht Vermeulen. I'm technical coordinator of, um, of Fed for Fire project. And actually we started in, uh, in, in 2012 already. So that's like almost 10 years ago with the first uh, Fed for Fire project. And um, so the, the current Fed for Fire will end uh, next year and then we will have a follow-up. I will come back on that as well. So I will um, shortly uh, introduce Fed for Fire and also talk a bit about lessons learned uh, about federating testbeds. So to give you an idea what Fed for Fire is, um, so this is a list of, of current testbeds which are federated in Fed for Fire. As you can see uh, with the different colors and icons, uh, different technologies um, are used going from wired networking, wireless networking, IoT, AI, cloud, etc. Some testbeds support multiple technologies, uh, some only support one, but you see a variety of, of testbeds. And also important here is that each testbed has its own um, software framework. So each testbed was started in independently and has a different kind of uh, software stack, APIs, etc. So that was the starting point. This is quite different, for instance, for the people who know Genie in the US, where they started from um, two uh, frameworks and then they deployed a lot of racks uh, throughout the country. So they only had two technologies to, to work with, um, while here there's a variety which uh, we needed to federate. So as you can see, it's, it's a real equipment uh, going from server infrastructure, wireless IoT, AI uh, recently. Um, so it's, it's a very diverse and so we can help a lot of people with, with this kind of infrastructure. Of course, we do have a, a portal, and um, so actually, uh, some months ago, we we, re we uh, released our latest version of that, helping people to select a testbed because that, in the end, uh, so in, when we started Fed for Fire, our main goal was to federate the testbeds to make it available, but now we are quite mature, and what we see is that people have trouble finding the right testbed for them. So now we have like a, a chooser to help them with some filtering so people can easily find the right testbed for them. So what is now the, the goal of that federation? So primarily um, we want to make it easy for experimenters. That is our main goal. Um, so for instance, having a single account, having a single or a small number of tools. Um, so it, it, in the end, it, with a single tool, you cannot do all, all the, all the testbeds. Uh, different testbeds, different technologies need different tools. For instance, web-based versus a client with SSH. Um, but in the end, 
having all that from a single portal, a single account, this is uh, the main thing. Also for the users, if it's now the same API or if it's a couple of APIs that are used under the hood, that's not that important. But of course, for the tool developers, that's important. Tool and testbed developers, uh, the less APIs that are used, the simpler to federate uh, with them. Uh, you also see in the middle that we are um, we have also federated with Edugain, which is um, uh, a component which makes it easy to use your university account. That's of course for academic people and students, uh, but also that helps. People do not have to register again with a new account password. They can use their existing one. It keeps also um, the user database uh, quite clean uh, because if the university account stops, also they do not have access anymore with that account to, to the test beds. Uh, why would an experimenter use multiple test beds? Well, actually, he wants to scale up um, his experiments or he wants to compare different environments. For instance, if you have a wireless um, experiment, you want to compare different environments with that. Redundancy, for instance, a test bed which is down, you want to go to just uh, use another test bed, for instance, if you have a class or something, and also to reuse experiments. Um, uh, so um, if, if someone uh, has uh, developed, uh, for instance, a class exercise or an experiment and described it in a paper on, on, a, on a certain testbed, you can uh, rerun it on another testbed, other hardware to see if the results are still valid. The design principles uh, that we had from the beginning is, um, so we have three different parts. So you have an identity provider with the accounts, you have um, tools and you have the test beds. And for all those parts, uh, what we envisioned was there should be multiple possibilities. So we do not work with a single identity provider or a single tool, but it should be possible to have multiple of them and all of them can go and uh, come as they want. Uh, so for instance, we have uh, some test beds that were new. Um, uh, of course, 10 years ago is a long time, so new test beds came in. Other test beds just stopped because they were um, having old hardware or not maintained sustainable anymore. The same for tools. Um, tools can come and go and the same for identity, identity providers. So for instance, on the right top, you see uh, identity provider, which was used in the beginning Planet Lab Europe. Uh, by now, Planet Lab Europe is not uh, that maintained anymore, so that identity provider is not uh, working anymore at the moment. So this is important and what we envisioned is to have uh, common APIs. Um, in the time that was XML RPC over SSL, of course, that's uh, very old, but remember it was 2012. So 10 years ago, um, that was one of uh, the suitable technologies. Um, all the test beds in Fed for Fire are remotely uh, usable. Um, certainly during this pandemic, this is uh, very useful for people. And for instance, what you see is you deploy some clouds on a test bed, you want to interconnect them, that can all be done in a single test bed in this case. Um, the total uh, test beds that are accessible with Fed for Fire account. So you saw the map with the test beds in Europe, but actually we federated also with other continents, uh, especially with uh, the US. So in total, you have now access to over uh, 65 test beds uh, with your Fed for Fire account and Fed for Fire tool. So that makes it very easy to use uh, all that kind of uh, resources. Um, to give you an idea of uh, the tool JFET, uh, so that was developed in the project. So this is some uh, screenshots. So each box is actually a physical resource that has been allocated. For instance, left top, you see uh, a bigger uh, software defined networking experiment uh, with a lot of, of, of links in them. On the bottom, you see a combination of two test beds, one providing optical equipment and another providing uh, server and client resources. And then they interconnect to use uh, both, both types of resources. Fed for Fire is also open access. Uh, so that means that actually almost everyone can uh, use the test beds. We, do, we just you, uh, ask some, some uh, small information to know it is not commercially used, of course, uh, but for research, for academics, um, there's uh, always open access possible. Um, just to give an example what, what has been done. So this was a small SME company 
um, from from Belgium who wanted to um, to test their equipment on the train. So they provide actually the passenger information systems, for instance, on the on the Thales and uh, Eurostar trains. And they got a lot of questions of, of uh, possible buyers of their software. How scalable is it? Um, so if we want to have uh, updates, for instance, of the software on a lot of trains, how does it work? Uh, can you scale this? And of course, it's very difficult for them to show it on, on real trains. So they asked us, uh, can we do this on a testbed? So that was the first problem. The second was um, they do, um, of course, they, they uh, need network access, but they switch between Wi-Fi and stations, for instance, to um, to deliver uh, larger content uh, to to the to the trains, or, and on the tracks they use 4G, 4G or 5G. So they wanted to to see how the, the handover works. So both problems were tackled on the test beds. Um, so the scalability was done with Kubernetes uh, containers. So each uh, train was uh, was actually a Kubernetes container, and then they scaled up and see how their software behaved on that. Uh, for instance, Kubernetes is something which does not exist in 2012, uh, but over the years it was integrated in Fed for Fire in one of the testbeds and, and it just uh, is usable now. The second problem was then uh, identified on, on, a, on a wireless testbed and there we had some mobile robots uh, running around and they could uh, easily do the handovers between the 4G and the Wi-Fi equipment. So they could um, especially also reproduce uh, certain cases, slow or fast, for instance, uh, and that's uh, very important for them. Another example we did, a bigger experiment, was um, a global video service uh, with uh, US and EU emulated users. Um, so think of Netflix now, but that was long before Netflix existed, uh, actually. So you have some content providers um, which, which want to store the video in uh, certain locations. And then you want to see how caches should work to bring the content near to the users. Um, so here you see a picture of, of a lot of testbeds on US side, EU side, even uh, we connected to, to Amazon. Uh, for that with a layer two link. And then uh, we, we deployed the experiment on that. So on some of the test beds, we deployed the content. On others, uh, we deployed emulated users uh, and scale up the users. So how do you do that? First, of course, you test your software in a single test bed just to see that everything is working, to see how the network uh, routing should work, etc. Then um, we brought it up on multiple test beds. And actually, you start with a backbone with a single node on each testbed, just to not uh, load the testbeds with too many resources for a long time, to see if everything works there. And then you scale up the number of users and resources for a shorter time. So this can be only done then for a couple of hours. You do your experiments and then you can um, uh, have your results. So this is a higher layer view. Uh, three clouds with the content, some caches in between, and then the emulated users. And this is actually then, uh, as you see, a triangle uh, network. You break some links to see uh, how your traffic behaves on that. So um, maybe to end this presentation, a number of lessons learned on that federation. So the very important thing is um, eat your own dog food. Uh, what I mean with that is that the testbed uh, should be bu built for real users. Um, so that means there should be a demand. Uh, just saying, okay, we should build a testbed and we have uh, some, some money and we will do this. That will not work. Then you need to, to look for, uh, for, um, for um, users and uh, that typically does not work because they, they want something different, etc. So all the testbeds in Fed for Fire, um, hence also the different technologies, are built from the ground up of users um, that had a certain demand. Uh, the testbeds were also built before Fed for Fire. We just federated them and that seems to, to work very well. Um, that will also help to find funding because you have a real research demand, so you can actually say, okay, this is what we need and that is how it will work. Also, um, start early with policies discussions uh, because if you federate or bring together a number of testbeds or make them interoperable, um, people start to use other testbeds and then uh, it takes up and then maybe you are too late to say, okay, well, I didn't want that amount of users or they need to reserve resources. Well, discuss this from the, from the ground up. 
Monitoring also very important because the test beds are only loosely federated. Um, so you have not a single management over all the test beds. So just monitor if a test bed is working and report that to the users, for instance, through a user tool so that the, the user can actually see how many free resources, if the test bed is mature, etc. Um, so maturity, I just um, came to say, is, is very important when you open it up to others. So if you have your own users, they are quite um, quite uh, comfortable. You can have some, some things, but in the end, if you open it up, it should be mature uh, just to avoid some frustration. Diversity and scale is very important. Um, so for instance, um, having smaller test beds a lot is maybe less in, less interesting than have a bigger one having all that uh, all that equipment together um, also be prepared for a lively environment so infrastructure as i say can go go change grow etc also be prepared for a long ride so if you talk about apis as i said well xml rpc over ssl is quite old if you look at it today but of course, uh, that has grown over the time. Uh, I talk about 10 years. Actually, it was something that existed on the test beds before, but that's how it how it goes. So even if you select the technology today, think that it might be to have uh, 10 years uh, in the future. Also, um, sustainability, uh, that's uh, a big issue as well. Um, so the test beds will never be self-sustainable uh, because then you would just start a spin-off and make it a commercial service. So think about that. You can make some of the components sustainable, uh, for instance, the federation, but all the test beds, all the hardware, all the parts of it will not be sustainable. So that's my last slide. I would like to thank you. Uh, I have some URLs on the uh, on the slides, and of course, in the future, from next year on, we will have uh, an S3 slices project, which is called Scientific Large Scale Infrastructure for Computing and Communication Experimental Studies. So that will actually take over uh, lessons learned and start a new story for uh, the next 10 years. So thanks a lot for having me. Thank you very much, Resh. And now is uh, Denis Andreff to present. Hello, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to this event. Let me share my screen. Just give me a second. I believe you can see that. So, yes. uh, Thank you. Thank you, Cedric. So, um, my name is Denis Andreev. I'm advisor of the ITUT study group 11, who is dealing with uh, different aspects, uh, including testing specification. In my presentation, I will give you the brief overview of what we achieved so far and uh, what our plans and what we are doing now. So, our mandate, as you can see on this slide, uh, focused on the four common aspects. It's the first one we are really has a, a long um, story uh, in the past. Uh, study group 11 is a parent group of the signaling system number seven, which was invented 30 more years ago. So it uh, still exists and the operators use it so widely over the world. Uh, also, we continue this, uh, this subject and must mostly focus now on the MT2020 protocols for the for example for the uh, balancing routing on the slicing uh, we also do the um, test specification for different technologies uh, such as uh, cpms based technologies for CPU interworking uh, also for interconnection of the networks based on the voice OLT stuff uh, we are doing some specification for combating counterfeiting and uh, the use of the stolen uh, devices so currently we have a four working parties uh, at the moment. Uh, first one deals with the signal requirements and protocols for the emerging networks. Uh, and there we are developing among the latest outcomes we achieved, 
uh, the ENAM infrastructure signaling architecture that might be used uh, uh, in parallel with the main ENAM stuff, what uh, is really widely used over the world. So also the second one is a control signaling protocols for MT2020, that's what I just mentioned. And uh, the working party three deals with the conformity and interoperability testing. That's what uh, the main focus of my presentation. And the final one is working party four deals with the combating contrafighting. We also have uh, two regional groups uh, for ECAT, it's uh, for CIS, uh, and for Africa region. Plus, in addition to that, we have a conformity assessment steering committee, which main role is to uh, develop uh, the way how ITU may recognize testing laboratories uh, dealing with the ITUT recommendations. Uh, from the testing perspective, uh, in the working party three, we have four questions dealing with the testing. The first one dealing exactly with the testing of Internet of Things. Uh, third, uh, second one, 13, it's called the title 13. Uh, it's a monitoring parameters for protocols used in emerging networks and especially SDN and MFV. Uh, for, uh, third one, 14, question 14, dealing with the testing of the cloud computing. And question 16 is the main question of the working party three, which deal with the test specifications of protocols, network services, including benchmarking testing. In this slide, just simply what we achieved so far on the testing perspective. One of the subjects that was very, very well discussed over the last two or three years um, was the internet speed measurements. It was a very huge work uh, where the several operators were involved. The main idea is how to measure end-to-end uh, -end, um, internet connection that the customer may trust and all stakeholders in general may trust to the measurement results. So, this is idea and there was a, like a specification which specified the framework how to measure end-to-end uh, -end, uh, between terminal equipment without thinking what is uh, in between of those uh, equipment. We don't care about the, what the network operators are doing inside. We are just thinking about the um, customer perspective on the measurements. So, and uh, mm, there are two recommendations specifying that the framework 3960 cool series and the non-normative document which specify methodology that every operator really uh, may implement this or another way uh, but in the cool supplement 71 we try to identify the way how the customer may measure internet connection speed uh, another uh, subject is the right uh, right side of this slide you may see we have a plenty of the test specification for different areas. Uh, one of the area is a uh, voice OLT interconnection among the um, operators. And uh, therefore we developed first the requirements, testing requirements for the uh, voice OLT interconnection and plus test specifications. All of them available on the series booth 3640 up to 3953 and uh, additional recommendations which specify specific stuff on interworking. Uh, plus, we developed several uh, specifications on IoT testing for, heter for heterogeneous gateway, for example. Uh, we also developed um, uh, uh, some uh, recommendations for monitoring system, and I will not stop that on all of them here because there are many. So you may simply go through them uh, afterwards. So uh, one of the idea uh, and uh, what I can see for, uh, from the Fed for Fire and other uh, presentation we, we will see today. So that's the um, kind of the model networks are the kind of virtual uh, or kind of the, like a laboratory environment is needed for different tests. So, for example, in 2006, long time ago, almost 15 years ago, we uh, approved uh, first recommendation which specified the, how the model network needs to be built to test NGN equipment. So from this time, we moved forward and in 2018, we specified specific uh, requirements for IoT uh, uh, testing using the model network uh, architecture. So what kind of the requirements, what the framework is needed for that. So this is a high level overview of the, of the way forward. So in this case, we developed uh, several uh, specifications. So I would indicate some key of them uh, in my presentation, the first one is a U3060 dealing with a 
heterogeneous internet IoT gateway, which um, may accumulate different technologies and provide interconnection of different technologies. Uh, um, I mean, IoT based uh, technologies. So you can see this functional architecture and structure of the heterogeneous network gateway uh, here, and we specify the, uh, the high level overview test specs for that. Uh, another way is a detailed framework for IoT testing, how to test, uh, what the conformance test, what the connectivity test, uh, also different uh, appendix specifying the specific specific uh, requirements and test for LoRa and, and so on. So uh, that's very, very detailed uh, specification that's also used for IoT testing. Another one, it was a framework for testing identification system used in IoT. So this one specify uh, or classify the IoT identification procedure uh, from the testing perspective. Uh, currently, we are working on the testing requirements and procedure of Internet of Things for um, based green data centers. So it's uh, uh, under study currently. So we uh, in, we invite all interested parties to take a part on that and that works. So um, now I would move to another stuff that's what uh, just mentioned regarding Fed for Fire and uh, other things regarding the bad federations. So in uh, WTSA, World Communications Federation Assembly, in 2016, there was a decision highlighted in Resolution 76 dealing with the CNI, Conformance and Ability Program, that uh, a set of methodologies and procedures should be developed for remote testing using virtual laboratories. So that was a trigger point for us to start some uh, activities on that. And now we can see that we, we, we go forward. So first of all, uh, in 2019, we uh, adopted uh, a new recommendation dealing with the props to be used for remote testing. So it's kind of the black box that can be installed on the customer side and to measure some results, even the internet speed measurement or it might be other performance assessment stuff. Uh, that's what can be integrated and used in the court in case the, the customer is, is unsatisfied with the, with the service it's, itself. So it also be, can be used for the model network tests, for the uh, remote testing like the bad federations and so on. So this is kind of the requirement to the, for the probe integrated to the test side. And finally, following the, all this kind of stuff, what we have now, I'm really delighted to say that we uh, in study group 11 just this week approved completely recommendation Q4068, which specify the general requirements for the test bed federation. This is a reference model. That means that specify the key requirements for the uh, for the all the best federation that might be used in the world, that all the stakeholders, all the vendors who would produce the equipment might follow this recommendation. And now we will focus on the um, on the APIs, on the application protocol interfaces to specify them, as you can see on the, uh, the, the bottom right, uh, the, the, the figure extracted from this recommendation, there are plenty of the APIs which needs to be specified somehow. So, so we really invite all interested stakeholders to join us. So, and finally, just to finalize that, so I might say in principle, we organized the workshop, joint workshop in March this year among IT, ETSI and IEEE on the test bed federation. So we, we, we think that this will be uh, the huge work for the coming years. So, and we invite all who wants to contribute and add to become IT members and join ITUT study group 11 in the future work. Thank you so much. Thank you, Denis. Um, now it's uh, Ranganai to present. Thank you, Cedric, uh, without um losing time let me just uh briefly myself uh and then jump into the presentation and i'll stop uh, showing the video just it was just to show myself a little bit uh, because of the network connectivity i may have some some issues so let me stop the video you've seen me so now let me come to the presentation itself Yes, can you see my screen, uh, Cedric? Not yet. Not yet. 
it, it, now it's okay. I, I see your emails, but that's the presentation. Um, you see the presentation now, right? Yes, but not in full mode. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yes. Um, so it's okay. Did you say you see the presentation? It's, it's okay. okay now. Okay. Yeah, perfect. You can start. Okay, perfect. Thanks, uh, thanks, Cedric. So, um, uh, just to quickly go through the point that uh, Dennis had already started uh, with um, uh, concerning the uh, joint ITU Etsy Test Bits Federation reference model that uh, Dennis uh, was uh, talking about, I, I run through that and talk about the use case that we are targeting with respect to the emergence of what we call autonomous networking, which is the autonomic network. Um, management and control uh, operations, uh, which is something uh, that is very important to consider in terms of uh, the use, uh, use cases for the for the test bed uh, uh, reference model that we say um, APIs are to be developed as, uh, and I'll run through that. Uh, my colleague uh, Muslim is also listening in the background, but I'll, I'll run through that uh, with you to see where we have this use case and why this use case is very important for us, especially for CSPs uh, to test autonomic, autonomous networking. Uh, key point is, of course, the reference model, as we say, it is a blueprint. We need to have uh, uh, a blueprint for federated test beds, uh, which enables automation, enables interoperability, and I'll talk about that way. We need this uh, this reference model, and then talk about the use case, especially um, uh, tailored to the uh, to what we call knowledge planes for autonomous networking. Uh, Etsy has a standard on that, a model that has been developed to, to enable this intelligence with AI driven, uh, um, this knowledge plane driven uh, networking era. And I'll run through that and then talk about the use case itself uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the knowledge planes. Uh, so let me start with the reference model itself. Uh, we have, uh, like I said, uh, Etsy and ITU, uh, uh, Etsy Int and uh, SG11. Uh, we, st uh, we standardized this reference model that Dennis talked about, uh, APIs and uh, um, are key, but the most important point here is to talk about how to expose services for test beds, uh, test beds as a service, uh, to build uh, the concept of test bed as a service. But uh, uh, first we focus on modeling what should be a test bed domain looking like in terms of uh, the constituent elements, the components, test managers, uh, test management systems, uh, test bed resource broker, uh, real-time resource state repositories to track uh, the the resources within the test bed. Uh, we have two layers of resources. Uh, the bottom layer is really the protocol stakes, the network equipment or network functions uh, like the switches and the like, and also protocols, which actually could be components under tests or could participate in a test scenario. And then we have the management and control uh type of resources like OSSs, like STN controllers that then uh overlay on top of the the fundamental resources of networking and um with that uh, like i said we have a test manager that should be part of the test bed domain concept so we have uh, this is what we are modeling as a as a test bed right we need to have these components build the model of a test bed domain and then we can talk about specializations of those uh, uh, test bed domains i'll talk about that a uh, key thing is that we have what we are calling inter test bed end to end uh, universal resource broker for test bed federations to expose the services of a test bed to users that build test suites, test cases, and then want to run test cases uh, via the test manager here in each of the domains. So these are, these are the users that need to use the test beds. And thanks to the standard, then we can talk about automation, we can talk about interoperability uh, in terms of uh, different types of test beds, including transformations of existing test beds we have tried to federate, which are not automated, which lack certain type of APIs, but uh, with this model, we can then move forward to, to the automation. Uh, so these are the different type of uh, specializations we can imagine. Um, Cedric, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Okay, yeah, perfect. I'm just checking that uh, was I was thinking I got disconnected. Yeah, so we have different type of uh, special of the testbed domain as we as we see so like we are saying yeah. testbed what should be a federatable testbed so we have iot then as the specialization of the testbed domain we can have different type of testbeds mac testbed run testbed x or transport testbed that conform to the testbed domain concept with these kind of uh, components inside um, that builds the the testbed and then of course the federation how to tie 
uh, horizontally between different test beds. These are uh, their reference points we are defining. And the test management system here can be used then to tie uh, different test beds horizontally, and then they then expose upwards to the end-to-end uh, -end universal resource probe. Uh, so now we we also have identified the need to talk about uh, federations of federations. So we could have, let's say, a, a federation that is uh, low level between different uh, test beds here as a broker, and then we want to expose the services thanks to, let's say, additional SLAs that build based on regulations. For example, we can have some test beds in a specific region, and then because of the need to monetize test bed as a service, you want to have uh, what we can call um, uh, federations of federations, where we can then have some some users that are in a different region accessing even test beds that are in a different, uh, let's say, country, thanks to to participating in a larger ecosystem that is defined by certain APIs uh, or SLAs as such uh, that build that uh, these two layers or, or levels of, of federations. Uh, we can uh, talk about also the, like I said, we have two levels of resources. The level one is more this uh, management um, and control type of resources, the OSS is Manostec and, and the like, knowledge planes and the like. And then level one, like I said, is then the lowest level where we can have, let's say, a, a, a particular protocol as, an, as a component under test, or we can have, let's say, a best station uh, as, a, as, a, as an SUT router switch. This, this is how we are modeling in that. And each of these resources, because it can be a test component, it can host what we are calling an embedded test agent. And so uh, what uh, uh, Dennis just mentioned, so please access that recommendation. You read more about these APIs and, uh, and the new world, which we have started to make sure that we can transform existing test beds we have to conform to this reference model, then to leverage the new model, even business model of the test bed as a service, and also to, to then be able to uh, build the larger ecosystem of automation, because we are talking about even discovery through this end-to-end -end resource, resource broker to, to have Google services to discover what sort of test beds are available in what region, what is the cost of using those test beds and the like. That, that's what we're... Now, coming to uh, autonomics, we, we said autonomous networking, we are moving in the era of autonomous networking. And the key thing is uh, Etsy has this reference model that we have uh, uh, developed uh, based on different, uh, let's say, uh, best practices and models for autonomic networking. It models what is called uh, the intelligent uh, network of the future transforming the existing networks today with control loops, fast control loops in network elements and a platform called knowledge plane that is the brain on top of the, the network infrastructure. And with this, uh, this is about softwareization with uh, what we call decision elements that, that are running AI algorithms to bring about the intelligence and self-optimization, self-configuration uh, and, uh, and self-protection of the network. You have, there's a standard in Etsy on that. But as a use case, what is important for us is when we look at this aggregation with these knowledge planes, just to be quick on that, uh, this the main concept of uh, the autonomous networking is what we call the Ghana knowledge plane. We have a knowledge plane for each of the network segments like uh, uh, access, uh, exo, transport and core network. Uh, that such kind of a concept uh, of a brain for the network to test that to test TEs with the AI algorithms, we need federated test beds because we need to emulate uh, two layers of uh, of federation uh, within the infrastructure with the TEs within the infrastructure and also what we we call the knowledge plane federation. So if you look at uh, this picture here, we have the infrastructure at the bottom, and we have knowledge planes that are disaggregated for each network segment, and then to test these. Uh, this intelligence with AI, the knowledge planes with AI, with complex event processing, we need to test beds that emulate this picture for the CSPs. And that is a use case we are targeting in Etsy to describe how to use the, the joint reference model that uh, um, uh, ITU has standardized uh, to use the, to consider the use case of uh, testing the autonomous networks with the, with the knowledge planes. This is the picture that we are targeting as use cases, like we said, this is the picture of what is in actual fact what we call the um, autonomic autonomous networks it's fast control loops slow control loops um, uh, this is one thing i can uh, comment and of, in terms of uh, harmonization with other sto's the ngmn has the same concept of uh, disaggregated knowledge planes uh, it adopted the etsy Ghana framework you can read more about uh, about that in the ngmn but the key thing is when we have disaggregation, how can we use the, uh, the, the federated test beds to test the autonomic management and control operations end-to-end, -end self 
optimization end to end between different domains of ANs. This domain could belong to Vodafone, this domain uh, to, to Orange or to Telecom Italia, and then they federate to exchange uh, knowledge and optimization end to end in roaming scenarios, in uh, security management to exchange uh, threats and predictions so that the, the other network on the other side is preparing mechanisms to, to, to self-defend against attacks and the like. So we are talking about really serious intelligence when you talk about autonomics and how to test that uh, within these uh, uh, disaggregated networks is where we have this use case of, uh, of using federated test beds. Uh, an example of this distributed, let's say, autonomics uh, or let's say federated autonomics, the intelligence end-to-end -end across different networks, both within the CSP, one particular CSP across multiple CSP, or between, let's say, broadband forum architecture and 3GPP architecture. We have some scenarios that uh, also Vodafone has, has, has um, compiled. And to talk about that, that also uh, brings about the requirement for federated test beds. There's also a proof of concept we are running. Uh, there are some contacts, uh, the details that you can also access here with the consortium we are running on the proof of concepts, different vendors and operators. And for that, we want to produce a TR on how to use uh, the reference model in, uh, in ITU to start transforming test beds into the future, to make them automated uh, in terms of testing autonomous networking. With that, I want to thank you uh, because not to lose time uh, so much. Thanks, thanks, Cedric. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now it's Guido to provide a new presentation. Hello, welcome everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes, very, very good. can in time share the presentation. OK, welcome everybody. What I'm going to show you today is a just uh, an overview from uh, the, the, the Etsy point of view and what we are doing in uh, in the direction of uh, the, the, the Federated SBAT. Of course, you have heard a lot of uh, other information from Dennis, from Wanganai, from Cedric that, of course, I will not repeat, but just mention in uh, in the presentation. Uh, just a, a, a short review about Etsy and uh, TCINT, so the, the main areas that we, we cover, and the, 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 the summary of, let's say, the testbed activity, uh, testbed related activities, and then the, the next step. So just a few words about Etsy. It's a technical standardization which started to be European, but now after the 3GBP and M2M partnership project is a really worldwide and is a lead in a technical standardization. And TCINT within Etsy uh, is uh, of course integrated in the in the ecosystem uh, with all the the the, the sector trying to create uh, a, let's say an, an ecosystem of uh, fora operators uh, manufacturer uh, academy uh, research in order to to bring uh, let's say the, the testing uh, standardization forward so uh, these are the area covered by TCA and T. So we move from uh, interoperability testing, uh, following always the the end-to-end -end methodology, but uh, we we come in some places also with the performance of the the, the, the performance testing. Uh, conformance is uh, of course an historical. Uh, um, placeholder for uh, uh, for HCINT, which uh, has been modified all over the year. Uh, at the beginning, it was uh, on the only methodology applied. Now, uh, conformance testing is applied from, with all the information uh, available. Uh, TCINT was also one of the promoter of uh, the, 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 the first interoperability events uh, on uh, IMS first, and then also with, with other uh, technologies. So we uh, have actually so groups on uh, so 5G verticals, uh, the, the group of um, autonomic management control, which is the A5 group, which Rang and I was talking about, that is uh, actually doing uh, really good work, not only extending the, the concept of autonomic in, uh, for example, AI, uh, and we are working on, uh, say, AI inter-system and testing models, and as well as also in uh, federated testbed um, sector. 
So just a, a few, uh, just to mention uh, the on the interoperability, you can find the more information on uh, uh, connect to an interoperability test, voltage interoperability, where we say joint the the all the the, the methodology in order to uh, make available uh, say a product test specification which can help you uh, running all the the test cases, uh, checking the the, the relevant uh, interfaces. And uh, this is quite uh, so a, a good product, uh, particularly for the, the the virtual environment, where maybe in some cases uh, internal interfaces are not available, and uh, you need to, to check in any case what is going on. Uh, conformance: uh, we we have uh, a, the, the the huge set of uh, uh, diameter, for example, conformance which is available, and uh, you can find it is available for say for members to 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 download and uh, and, and use. And uh, the, the group of uh, automa uh, autonomic management control, which uh, Rang and I was talking about first, with all the, the proof of concept uh, program. But uh, let's say the, 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 all the group start from, uh, say, the, the Ghana uh, work, which was, uh, say, approved in Etsy some years ago. And uh, the application of this Ghana model brings to a lot of uh, so application and effective uh, uh, really use. Uh, some deliverable without going into details uh, uh, come also from interaction of other European projects like uh, LiceNet or uh, say with the um, other kind with the cooperation, for example, so with the NGMN. And uh, what I mentioned before, uh, the, the work we do uh, in uh, for AI intersystem and uh, and testing model. So the the group for the 5G verticals. Uh, was a quite uh, a good, uh, say, good work starting uh, from uh, the 5G uh, EU project, which we, we say brought a, a new topic uh, con for the, the platform assessment. So uh, the, the idea uh, was, they say, to start from uh, to, to a generic platform and uh, and then to, to give a vision to all the components that we need to to bring in. And then finally, so the, the 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 work came to a definition of a vision of a generic platform, which was kindly then uh, working together and uh, very very useful for the testbed federation. And uh, okay, oh, uh, the the work uh, that uh, Rang and I was talking about in uh, in his presentation uh, for the the federated bed, where uh, let, let's say. A lot of component has been uh, addressed from the, the autonomic part. Uh, just before going, uh, so in just uh, we we work a lot with uh, uh, Asta di Group 11, and we started collaboration. And actually, Dennis mentioned that the work we started with the study Group 11 has been approved. And uh, say all these contribution and work were be, were presented in a, a joint uh, workshop uh, with the uh, ITUT, Etsy, and I uh, in March this year. So uh, I will not repeat uh, the, the so the, what already Rangan I said, but just uh, what it was an application of uh, uh, the Ghana model uh, and uh, then. Uh, uh, specialization of uh, the test bed concept in order to have really all the the the, the stones, all the the bricks of the world that we we need to to build, and uh, finally, so uh, the the specializing so to go into the test suite designer executor, and then you can really go at the the, the lowest level of the nomination of uh, of the bricks and the elements that you can use. In within uh, test bed federation. So uh, just coming to the the, the summary uh, and next step. So industry needs uh, to really uh, experiment and pilot the 5G enabled business case before moving to commercial. And the problem of uh, test bed is uh, one of the huge problems that's going to be solved. Uh, I believe uh, that uh, from the standardization point of view, we can help because uh, uh, working on APIs and describing test bed federation means uh, coming to something that uh, we, we can allow all say, the, the uh, test bed to talk to each other. 
uh, we need to share so that the API specification and standardization roadmap in a harmonized way. That's why we will we will bring we will work as Etsy together with ITU and uh, so other uh, player that wants to, to, to work with us in order to, to share and accelerate <clears throat> this kind of definition. Uh, because we don't have to forget that this is not uh, only academic. This can have a, a really economical and business application because, of course, uh, making available does not mean that uh, maybe there, there could be some uh, organization that can, can really sell. Uh, its services in terms of uh, test bed and be really useful for the, the, the entire ecosystem and making business out of uh, uh, this kind of uh, topic that seems to be only uh, academic. So um, this closed my presentation. If you have uh, any questions, uh, please uh, let me know. Thank you very much. Uh, somebody, anybody has uh, had, uh, any question to the speakers? Uh, let let me know. Uh, basically, I will present uh, the work we have uh, done with uh, uh, Fed for Fire Plus, uh, ITUT, and HCTC in terms of standardization. I will share my screen. So basically what we did uh, since uh, one year, basically, it's to define uh, open APIs for interoperable testbed federation. Uh, the context, uh, basically now we need uh, more experimentation uh, for the ICT domain uh, in large testbed federation. Uh, basically, we have Fed for Fire Plus, uh, which is uh, the largest federation worldwide of next generation internet test beds. Uh, the interconnection and uh, the interoperability between all the Fed for Fire Plus test bed uh, was done uh, through APIs uh, developed uh, since many years, uh, like you, like your brushed, uh, describe uh, described uh, it. And uh, this, uh, these APIs were never standardized in uh, SDO, so we have uh, undertaken um, the standardization process uh, in the context of Fed for Fire Plus project. Basically, we have defined a general architecture. Um, on the top, we have online services uh, offered to the researcher. Then we have different testbed distributed uh, in Europe, or also uh, in the uh, US uh, through Genie, for example. And each test testbed is responsible for uh, different resources, heterogeneous uh, resources. At the end, uh, we need to have several APIs uh, in, in this context. Uh, in Fire for Fire Plus, typically we have an aggregate manager API, which uh, permits to do all the operation to manage uh, the resources provided by the test beds. We have the Slice Authority API, which is um, management of the a set of resources, which is a slice, a testbed slice, uh, which, which are, a slice is linked to a specific user, a researcher typically, and we have the member authority API, which is the management of the users and their credentials, of course. After uh, we, after defining this uh, general architecture and explaining these APIs, we have proceeded to the standardization at ITUT G11, and also with the help of um, HCTSINT, we have developed a complete uh, recommendation uh, with the requirements, uh, the description of Ghana, and the context why we need and for what we need uh, open APIs uh, for interoperable testbed federation. And those objective of this recommendation was the definition of the potential improvements for uh, the interoperability in the context of uh, testbed federation. You have also described the reference model and the technical framework to achieve the, the interoperable testbed federation. Uh, we have already specified uh, some APIs for the interconnection and the interoperability of testbeds, and some reference metrics were also designed 
to ease the integration and the interoperability. Uh, so this, uh, uh, these objectives uh, are achieved through a generic reference model based on the Ghana. Uh, you mentioned the potential, uh, the potential improvement for uh, the test bed interoperability and federation. Uh, so we have dif different all these elements and uh, the requirements for uh, APIs for test beds uh, federation. And we have some example of uh, APIs uh, showing the instantiation of it with the generic model. We have uh, reused um, and explained the principal uh, APIs from, from Fed for Fire, Fed for Fire Plus, and we have put in the annexes of this recommendation some examples of use cases for testbed federation and uh, if you have uh, some question you can ask uh, them now uh, i put some link also about uh, the recommendation for, for fire plus uh, and ghana thank you very much Any questions? If not, uh, I, I would like to thank uh, everybody, uh, not only the speaker, but also the attendee uh, for uh, this uh, session. Yes, yes. Uh, hello, Cedric. Yeah. Yes, can, yeah, just to comment on the, you know, we have uh, presented uh, this uh, as a traction around uh, test based federations, and thanks for this summary on uh, how to. Let's say bring the stakeholders, as also mentioned by um, Dennis and um, and Julio, to say uh, within this work of having a blueprint moving forward with the uh, standard-based test federation, we are inviting the different stakeholders um, to really see how certain APIs, like described in the in the in the recommendation, um, how they evolve to impress uh, the automation because. Uh, the automation on discovery of test beds and then to be able to compose test cases and the like is thanks to this uh, blueprint we have started. And uh, my uh, my question is not a, com a question which I'm posing, it's rather a comment to those uh, players, uh, including, let's say, the audience, um, to keep track on what we are doing uh, in uh, this joint work with the SG11 to see how we transform test beds uh to conform to this model because it's very easy and possibly there could be some kind of eu projects that could uh start this reference model and try to answer the question of what could be a framework um that should be developed to start transforming the test beds we have today federated or not to conform to this blueprint in order to have this larger ecosystem of automation uh, of test based federation where monetization of test based as a service could be envisaged moving forward in 5G and beyond, embracing these aggregated networks uh, paradigm and the like. So it's just a comment that I, I wanted to add to, to, to this, and maybe Muslim might want to add as well, because um, my colleague, uh, we have been talking about um, uh, this disaggregation, and then this disaggregation means that we have to really leverage uh, uh, federated test beds to be able to quickly innovate and test uh, uh, components and services um, in the 5G and, uh, and era beyond. I don't know if Muslim is still online. Muslim, are you online? Uh, maybe he is muted. Anyway, that was my comment, uh, Cedric. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, basically, uh, somebody is asking um, for the links to the download to for downloading the presentation. I think it will be provided by uh, the IT Week uh, organizers. Uh, Cedric. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, regarding um, the the recommendation of 4068, if it would be interested in that, as it was approved this week, so it will come a pre-published version online uh, as soon as possible. I hope yes. in, in next week it will be made available. So I just okay. confirm. Thank, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we have uh, finished the session.
with uh, one minute uh, in advance. Thank you very much to the speakers, to all uh, the people present. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you Have a nice day. Bye bye. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye bye.